Watch Carver. What's going on down there? Okay. State Kodiak, this is the fishing vessel uh, Northern Challenger. Northern Challenger, this is Cal State Kodiak. Go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, thought I'd call you. I think we got a problem, okay? Over. Uh, Roger, uh, what's the nature of your problem, sir? Uh, we're taking on water in the Lazarette. Uh, don't know how bad it is yet, okay? Over. Uh, Northern Challenger, Cal State. Roger, sir, what's your present position? I can't stop it. It's coming in too fast. These men are about to put their lives into the hands of thermal resistance. Come on, Hank! The temperature of the seawater is about five degrees above freezing. Where's Hank? Hank still there? We're two miles off Spruce Cape. Uh, we're going over. We're, we're going over. Rigget's coming down, John. There's the boat. Watch out for the rigget. It's going over. Jesus, he's in the water without a suit. Hurry up, John. This is a survival suit. It gives you the best protection available to prevent heat loss from your body to the cold water. Water takes heat away from your body 25 times faster than does air. Air, therefore, is a good insulator and provides a great deal of resistance to heat flow from your body to the water. The survival suit gives you that resistance by trapping air between you and the cold water. And it traps air in two different ways. The rubber of the survival suit contains microscopic air bubbles, which provides insulation from heat flow, resistance to heat flow. And the survival suit itself traps air between the suit and your surface of your body to provide even more air resistance to heat flow. That resistance to heat flow that the suit provides allows the men to remain in the water, hopefully long enough for a rescue team to arrive. Without the insulation of the suits, they'd have little chance of survival. The large temperature difference between their skin and the cold water would pull the heat out of their bodies in a matter of minutes. resistance of the survival suits acts against temperature difference to slow the rate of heat flow and extend the survival time from a few minutes to many hours. Thermal resistance. Divide temperature difference, which is what acts like force in a thermal system, by the heat flow rate. Moving away from Sometimes the temperature difference can be extremely uh, high, so the materials that resist the flow of heat become very exotic. In fact, a spacesuit even includes a liquid air conditioning system that surrounds the astronaut in warm water to replace the body heat that's lost to space. The opposite of a thermal resistor is a thermal conductor. In this case, the object is to try to lower the thermal resistance so heat will move more easily. 
In the nuclear plant, the technician was concerned with transferring the heat from the reactor to the turbines, so the heat exchanger is made of materials that conduct heat very well. We often think of insulation as trying to keep something hot, but it's just as important trying to keep something cold. These containers hold liquefied nitrogen gas, which is about 320 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. To keep it that cold, the containers are double walled with a vacuum between the layers. The space is a thermal resistor that acts against the flow of heat, in this case, from the outside to the inside. Can you see how thermal resistance is being used here? Thermal resistance, trying to stop heat with some kind of material that will not allow heat to pass through it very easily. You find it by dividing the temperature difference by the heat flow rate, or delta T over QH. The opposite of a thermal resistor, a thermal conductor like your tongue. By the way, in case you're wondering what it's like to wear a survival suit for the first time, this is our producer, who had the nerve to put one on and jump in the ocean having never done it before.